Come closer, child, she whispers as she pulls my hands towards her. I struggle, but her hands insist, pulls me in. What is it you are looking for, child? The graying thumbs shuffle along the insides of mine. Tell me what my future is, old woman. Will I be rich? Will I be famous? She's not amused. Runs her fingers along the grooves in my palms. You will grow old with the tide and lose your family before their time. You will find great riches you will never know and lose great friends you will never meet. <sighs> I bet you say that to all the boys. Now, do you have something to say, or am I wasting my time with you? Well, that depends, child. What is it you want to hear? Well, you're the palm reader. Tell me what you see. What I see? What I see? She moves with the grace of a former life, her eyeballs shuffling back and forth behind her eyelids, muttering to herself the scent of incense scouring the room like a pagan rain dance. What I see, hmm, I see a desperate youth clutching onto his past like a map that can never lead him forward, only astray. Well, what else, I say? I see a scared little boy, afraid of himself, pretending to be a man. Don't waste my time, old woman, tell me what you see. She grins. Well, what is it you want me to see? You are not here for answers. Why are you here, boy? I waffle something about a dare I was dared. An impulse born out of boredom on a Saturday night. She shushes the bullshit out of me. Opens her eyes wide to stare into mine like glaciers. Time suspended in her cornea. Without breaking stare, I feel her hand shuffle up along my arms, up and down, scaling me. What scares you, child? I let my wrist limp and submit to her grasp. I don't know. And immediately I understand she's not talking about her. She's not talking about this tent, this Saturday night, this country circus fair, this road trip to as far away from home as my gas fund allows. Not today, not this week, no, the bare bones of it all. Ah, yes. That is the first truth you have said, child. She cackles, slapping the air with her tongue. Her fingers grip tighter around my wrists, and her eyes roll back into hiding. Hmm. I can see your past written in this hardened skin, child. Clasping onto itself, fearful of dropping history. I see pain and anger. You tattoo it into your flesh so it doesn't wander so it doesn't escape forsaking you. You collect these memories like broken family heirlooms, ceramic and cold, their fingers running along the lines of my palms like braille. What is written is what remains, is what is left to shelter from the hurricanes. Child, you have asked me to tell you what is written, and I have told you what is written. What you should ask yourself is what remains, what remains Unwritten. I'm standing at the foot of my bed, staring out at a battlefield of broken boy soldiers, a plastic genocide of G.I. Joes, cowboys, and red Indians all scattered in broken pieces across my bedroom floor. I don't know why I've done this. But it all made sense as my eight-year-old hands bent and cracked their bones. But now, now I stare at my aftermath and realize some things cannot be undone. Like rage. Like death. And as I watch my fingers tremble with fear and regret, I understand what it means to kill your children. What fatherhood can feel like some days. What a caged anger can do to a man when writing Mayday into his skin over and over and over a thousand times will not bring help. Not when he doesn't let anyone close enough to read these messages like Braille. I open my eyes. My mother lets go of my hands. Her eyes are now welling with tears. She says, 
What have you not been writing, child? And my eyes have already spoken everything. 